Yeah. But can I ask you about that? Because I asked before, would you mind talking about it? Because you were much in the news last week yeah. about this issue because you were on George Stephanopoulos' show. Mm -hmm. And he was questioning about the idea that you're supporting Trump, who was found guilty of sexual assault by a jury in New York for the Eugene Carroll case. Um, and you were a rape victim yourself. And he's, I guess his implication was that being so, that you should not support someone who is uh, convicted of this crime. Well, number one, uh, to set the stage a little bit, I went on to talk about 2024, when the general election of Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. I had my 14-year-old kid with me, my daughter with me that day. It was, it, was, it was work. I was there for work. She had no choice. She had to come with me. It was a really uncomfortable conversation afterwards with her on the way to the airport over this. And she knows my story. But number one, Donald Trump wasn't convicted of sexual assault. Um, the, the 83 million was a defamation suit. It was about defamation. There was a sexual abuse claim, and she got a little bit for that. But the vast majority of it was for defamation, not rape, not sexual assault. So um, I think there are two is types. Is that right, of, it, That is right. Let, let me just say this. That is well, right. Let actually. me let me say this about what happened there, and from my perspective, and I look, I have a lot of respect for Nancy Mace's courage in talking about rape and sexual assault, and I admire your being public about that. I, I, I also think, you know, I, I know Nancy's good at ask, answering tough questions, and I, I also think, as George Stephanopoulos, as a journalist at a time where I believe in the First Amendment, he should be asking everyone, and not just her, any Republican. It's a fair question if you're saying, if there is a person who's running for president, uh, and but maybe give a, a heads up just, to the rape victim it, that you're going to talk to her about her own rape when she comes on your show, and that's the first thing you're going to ask. Like that to me, like they didn't do that. There was no, hey, we're going to film this clip, and this clip triggers me. Right. Uh, five years ago, I told my story on the South Carolina State House floor. I, we were doing a fetal heartbeat bill. There were no exceptions for rape or incest, and there were no women speaking. Rape victims and girls who are victims of incest had no voice. I had never told my story publicly. It took me 25 years. I go to the law and I tell the story for the first time. We were the first state in the nation to have a fetal heartbeat bill with exceptions for rape and incest because I put them in there after very, uh, after very, after a very, very simple time telling that story. And so it takes a lot of courage, but then to feel like he was weaponizing my own rape for a political hit job and it was wrong my daughter was there it was awful I felt bullied um, the least they could have done is said hey we're going to talk about this but we're going to lead with it and it was a 10 minute interview about my own rape it was completely I think wholly inappropriate I will answer the tough questions I have talked about it but that video that speech I give gave triggers me I know I gave it publicly but it's I mean there was, it was a reason for, it didn't come out of left field there was a reason why he asked the question it was, a it was related job. to something with Donald Trump and mm -hmm. Donald Trump I mean you're, you're you went to the Citadel right yeah and I will tell you George Stephanopoulos went the last 30 seconds at the Citadel that place made me tough I will answer I'll, all the I'll questions bet, oh, but I'll, 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 I think in a, in a time